give God all the glory. I'll be very, very brief this morning, as you can imagine. Uh, one of the grandmothers uh, whispered to me as we were dancing that, Pastor, do we have to preach today? <laughs> that, why don't we just... <laughs> and it dropped in my spirit that that grandma is right. So whatever you want to preach today, divide it into three. And just do only one turn today. And that's what I'm going to do. Father, again, we thank you. Uh, don't go to the hospital after service because um, the baby passed all the tests. <laughs> and my wife passed all the tests. So let's give Jesus a really big clap. <laughs> Glory be to God. I'm sure you know I pass all the tests. <laughs> oh. 100%. What a mighty God we serve. Well, like Pastor Ibn has said, I mean, the naming is on Friday. And um, I'll provide more information. But I know some people sometimes have to go for some other assignments before we share the grace. It's going to be at 7 p.m. on Friday. Um, the Almighty God will be glorified once again. We are one family here. And I believe when a brother or a sister is rejoicing, every one of us should rejoice because this is our testimony. This is for every one of us. So I know, I know, I know that every one of us will be here on Friday. It will be our joy. And um, please do everything to be, to be here. In fact, I will recommend, uh, because those days when we used to be in the world, when you are celebrating your birthday or your mother is doing something or your father is doing something, your colleagues at work, you bring them, your friends in the neighborhood, you bring them. So when you are coming, say something unusual, something uncommon has happened in my church. Why don't you come along? How many of us will do that? Let me just see so I know. Ah, then let me hear you shout another hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, it's very difficult to go into the world, but but I will, I will go to it because the Lord really wants me to share briefly with us to get into the month of November. Uh, you very well know that um, this whole year the Lord had asked us to study the book of Daniel. And we have taken one chapter per month. Uh, this month is chapter 11. And the theme is divine wisdom. And I will start a series, obviously, that I will just take, like I said, uh, just about a third of it, um, maybe a little less now. And then we, will, we still have the month ahead of us. And in this series within the theme, the topic is dreams come true. Dreams come true. Our text will be Daniel chapter 11. We take only the first two verses. Dreams come true. Also, I, in the first year of Darius the Mid, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. And now will I show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Gracia. And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his words in Jesus' name. Amen. Every great accomplishment in life and destiny, every great accomplishment in life and destiny begins with a dream. And every great dream begins with a dreamer. Joseph was a dreamer. His exploits and greatness in life began with dreams. If you read Genesis 37, God gave him two major dreams, telling him how great he will become. Abraham was a dreamer. A vision of becoming the father of nations 
when in fact he had no son of his own. Anna was a dreamer. She saw a prophet in her son before conception. David was a dreamer. He saw Goliath dead before he fired the first shot. Brethren, this morning I've come to tell you that without dreams, we reach nothing. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs 29, verse 18a, Proverbs 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Without dreams, you place limits on what God can do for you. The exploits of great men and women of old who left great legacies began with dreams. You must wake up in the morning and begin to remember the great things that have been said over your life and destiny. The great things that the Lord has said years back. The visions, the passion, the dreams in your heart. Well, it may appear that maybe God wasn't serious when you got the dream. But God is not a comedian. He has a sense of humor, but he's not a joker. His promises, they are yea and amen. God is not a man that should lie, neither the son of man that should repent. As he said it, will he not do it? As he spoke in it, will he not make it good? Numbers 23, verse 19. Don't joke with any dream, vision, prophecies that God has sent forth over your life. Walt Disney dreamed of building a place where parents would take the family and have fun together. Oh, his brothers laughed at him. Who will come? It will be too expensive. But today we all yearn to take children to Disney. You are limited by how big you can dream. And I dare say, no dreams, no greatness. In Genesis 13, verses 14 and 15, Genesis 13, 14 and 15, the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had left him, raise your eyes and look from where you are to the north and to the south and east and west. For we give all the land that you see to you and to your children and to your children's children forever. In Genesis 13, Abraham had no son, not even Ishmael. But here, God was talking about him becoming fathers of nations. Please don't rule yourself out of God's wonders, don't. I remember when we moved there and everywhere was a jungle. Uh, the, the church, of course, started in 06, but the land was purchased in 05, April, April 24th. And everywhere was bush. I remember we had that little tiny building that has been demolished now. And I would come, come out of my office and I would go in between the bush and I would say, well, you know, the first building, the youth church, will be right here. And I will sketch it how I believe it's going to look. And then I will go to where we have the sports complex now. And I will say, well, we're going to have a soccer field here. There'll be floor light. One day is coming when there'll be a big tournament. And people will, will come. And then I will move around and say, well, the youth church, after a while, we have to build something very big. And because we had a vision some years back that this place became a massive ark and there was flood all over the place, and the only place you could run to was this church. I said, well, when we are going to build this, this church, we have to create an impression, an impression of a sheep. That's why people ask us, what is this thing that you have around the building? Oh, we didn't have all the money to build a building that looks like, like a sheep. So we, we decided to do an impression so that when you look, look at it from a distance, you can see a sheep. You have to live your dream. The man that has a neighbor has a massive land, about 2.2 acres. Each time I will walk up to the, across, I say, we are going to buy this land. We are going to buy this land. So when he sent for us and said, I want to sell this land to you, somebody else had brought cash to me. But I told them that except this, 
this church is not interested. I said, ah, you know, we have been interested. By the way, we told him some, some times ago, but it was only, was it last year? It was only last year that we, that we bought the land. My point is, there is something that God has put in your heart that will happen. Oh, I know that sometimes it appears that like it won't happen again because years have passed. I mean, that land, it was from when we moved there. I mean, Pastor Buna will tell you and those that were here, that I see this land here, we are going to buy it. There are a few things now that I'm careful to say because people can then misinterpret. Because I have some things I've just said now that by God's grace, God will, will give to us. You have to dream. You have to dream. You want to get married? You have to stand before the mirror and decide what kind of song will be my processional hymn. What kind of song will be the recessional hymn? You have to see that. Oh, you're looking for a child. Oh, there are many times I have different kind of dance with different meaning. <laughs> you know, I have some dance that I go like that, I go like that, I go like that. That's how you carry a baby. You go like this. You go like this. <laughs> now, you have to bring to reality dreams that God has put in your heart, some desires from God. Don't let time destroy the dream. Dreams, visions, and prophecies, they are siblings. And they rule the life and destiny of everyone. So hold fast to your dreams. For if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Don't let the dream die. Dreams are worthless if you only dream and don't take any action. As wonderful as dreams could be. We must take action towards the dream. Dreamers without actions are daydreamers. The text we read talks about Daniel. Daniel's entire life was about dreams, visions, and prophecies from beginning to the end. And you could see where we read promises, revelations about what will happen, not necessarily to him as a person, but things that will yet unfold. And like I said earlier on, God doesn't joke with his words. That's why <laughs> the first name that the Lord, and the Lord gave the name long ago. The name Bono Atifa, you might not know, but it's in Psalms 115, verse 3. Our God is in the heavens. He does as he pleases. You have to get to a point when you begin to bring to realities the dreams that God had put in your mind. Dreams come true. Daniel's dreams came true. Joseph's dreams came true. Abraham's dreams came true. And I prophesy into your lives that all your dreams, the great dreams of God for your life shall all come to pass in the name of Jesus. The only one point I will make before I close this morning is that many great dreams, however, had suffered miscarriages and some others suffered abortion. So I just give one or two warnings because I know you've got a dream. Oh yes, everybody, every one of us got a dream. But it's important to pay attention to one or two, three, two things that bring miscarriages and abortion to dreams. The first illustration is from the story of a great man of God, as far as I'm concerned. His name in scriptures is Jonathan. Jonathan's great dream suffered an abortion. Jonathan was the bosom friend of David. In 1 Samuel 23, 16 to 18, 1 Samuel 23, 16 to 18, and Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthen his hand in God. And he said unto him, Fear not, 
For the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find thee. And thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee. And that also my father knoweth. Three things, he said. The hand of my father David will not find him. That came to pass. And you shall become king, talking to David. That came to pass. But he said, I shall be next to the king. But that was aborted. That was aborted. God was in line. The Lord was speaking through him. Encourage my son David that the hand of Saul will not find him. Encourage him that he will become the king regardless of what the enemies may try. And by the way, the heaven's agenda is that you become next to the king. What happened that that part of the dream, of the revelation, of the prophecy failed? Verse 18. And they too made a covenant before the Lord. And David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. You cannot fulfill God's agenda in the enemy's camp. It doesn't matter who the enemy is. Because at this point, King Saul had become the enemy of God. It was a matter of time for destruction to befall Saul. Now, if your heart is somewhere and your body is somewhere else, you are likely to abort God's vision. So point number one, therefore, is that you cannot receive your divine allocation outside of your divine location. Be at the right place at the right time. Oh, the moment they enter into the covenant, the moment he gave the word was the time for him to have joined hands with David. 400 vagabonds, the Bible says, came together. They were, they were, they were, they, they were people who look at that this one cannot amount to anything. They were broke, desolate. They are vagabonds. But they came to David at Cave Adulam. These 400 people that followed David, the Bible said they became the mighty men of David. Is there a dream that God has given to you? It's important to know where you then find yourself. There are many dreams that were destroyed because you married the wrong person. There are some dreams that cannot be fulfilled except you marry according to God's persuasion and leading. And I need to be careful with that so someone doesn't get home. I say, well, you see now, I think I, make, I made a mistake when I married you. No, 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 that's too late now. In that case, what you need to do is to go to God. Say, so go to the foundation of my marriage and make things work again. But I'm only saying that for the singles. There's a dream that God has sent you here to accomplish. And there's a particular home where it will find fulfillment. You get into the wrong person, oh, you are finished. I thank God for my wife. You see, the pain of waiting for the fruit of the womb is heavier on the woman than the man. But she never wavered taking care of other people's children. Stay focused, stay, you know, I just thank God that I didn't miss it at that point. For every dream, there is a divine location for it to happen. 
We are in the world where we only use common sense. But it's not everything that goes with common sense. In fact, there are things God will ask you to do that will not make sense. But if God is the one saying it, then that's what you must do for the dream to come to pass. Oh, he may give you two jobs at the same time. And one job is going to pay you $200,000 per annum. And you have another job that will pay only $80,000 per annum. Which one are you going to take? By common sense, of course. When you are asked, present it to God, say, for what? Why should I present it to God? You can be lured out of your divine location, and then you miss your divine allocation. Oh, Jonathan missed becoming the second in command. I think I will leave it at that only point this morning. And do you know there is no better place to be than in the place of service? Because it's in his presence that is the fullness of joy. It is at his right hand that pleasures for everyone. I know sometimes when we are believing him for this dream to come to pass, oh, it's difficult to even want to come to church. But that's the wrong approach, is the deceit of the devil. To say, they will make mess of you. So all this while you have been going to, to church, what has come out of it? But that's even more difficult for a pastor. Oh, by God's grace, we have prayed for many people, trusting God for the foot of the world, many. And sometimes they come and say, God has done it. We jump up and rejoice with them because it only means that our own is coming. <laughs> oh, my wife and I, we always do everything possible to attend naming ceremony or anything that has to do with children. If service is going on and as an adult you want to talk to me, I really don't like it. But even if I'm dancing, it doesn't matter how spiritual what I'm doing is. When a child shows up, I stop everything. If I need to carry the child, I carry the child. If I need to dance with the child, I dance with the child. Oh, people may look at you and this guy must be a fool. What, what exactly, what is, why, why, why is he, why is he rejoicing? Oh, today there's going to be Nemi on Friday, but even after then, we're going to have a testimony night. Because one day of naming cannot, cannot. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, that's going to be. I uh, probably can tell you in advance. We are having 168 hours of praise. And all of these details wasn't, you can ask the choir and the ministers. God just tear our heart. We didn't know all that we would be doing. But three hours before 168 hours of praise, starting at 10 p.m. on the 24th of December, we will then have, you know, from 7, it's a Tuesday, from 7 to about 9, 9.15 or, or even 9.30, a testimony night. We are not the only ones speaking. There are many people, some here, some in far places, that God has sent to us in some common way. Can give you an example. A member of this church, I will not make mention of the name so that when they say it by themselves, you will hear. In February, sent me, uh, what do they call that thing now? Uh, us with the thing that we use, what do they call that thing? The, no, the Urukere, whatever that is called. You know, there's this thing that kings put in their hands in, in African culture, you know, it's when they really want to dance and you want to hail, you know, the king. That I was holding the two and, you know, dancing with it. And my wife that was carrying a baby and we we're just dancing. That was in February. But you see, for some reason I didn't see it. So it was close to delivery that um, so oh, pastor had sent you something, you know. In fact, I said, you did? Then I went back to it. He had said that this year, God says you are going to have your child. There are 
close to definitely over 12 people who came like that. One came and bought a clothes, a clothes rather, and said, Pastor God said, you know, the child is now around the corner, so take, take the clothes. So on that day, we will gather people together who God has spoken to. And there are many who are not, you know, how do you go and tell your pastor sometimes? Some people are not. So I can imagine how many other people that God spoke to. So we will have testimony time. But the point I'm making is that while you are waiting, serve God. While you are waiting, dance. While you are waiting, sing. It doesn't matter where I find myself. Sometimes I'm the guest speaker in a place and I get to the church and the pastor is just being a bishop and does and apologies to the bishop. But bishops don't, are not supposed to dance anyhow. They are very highly reverent people, you know, they're they just to go like that, you know. No, I get to the place and then the old pastor is doing like this. Ah, I look at him, I just, it's my father's house, yes? So I just move to the front, I begin to dance. Then I saw the congregation of the pastor joining me. I said, ah, so people can dance in this place. What's wrong with this pastor? <laughs> Don't let your waiting time be a sorrowful time. Let your waiting time be a joyful time. Can we rise to our feet? Let's rise to our feet. Father, we thank you.